Let's take a look at simulation, and we'll use R as our tool. Uh, Debro covers simulation just a little bit at the end of chapter one and at the end of a lot of chapters in the book. Uh, so in this chapter, our key concepts will be Monte Carlo simulation, just what it is, what the steps are. Uh, we'll take a brief look at the sample function, which is a pretty commonly used function, as you might guess, for random sampling. Uh, and then we'll work through exercise 1.43 together. So Monte Carlo simulation at its simplest is a three-step process. Simulate a trial uh, of whatever the random experiment is that you're working on, determine whether success occurred, and step three is to just repeat steps one and two. So uh, typically we'll do this a thousand times, ten thousand times, even a hundred thousand times. Uh, just with computing power today we can we can do these enormous numbers of trials to simulate things that we couldn't do even uh, ten years ago very easily. So let's take a look at the sample function that we're going to use here today. Uh, there are four parameters that are commonly used. The first parameter is x. This is just a vector of the outcomes that you're sampling from. So if you're going to roll a six-sided die, x would be the sequence one through six. If you're going to flip a coin, you could make x equal the vector uh, heads, tails, or one, two, or however you want to set that up. Uh, and if you don't want to supply the entire vector, if it's just a sequence from one to whatever number you're interested in, you can actually just supply that last integer. So if you say three, it'll sample from the vector one, two, three. Size is the sample size, right? How many elements do you wish to sample? Uh, replace tells R whether you're going to sample with or without replacement. Uh, so if you set it to true, that's sampling with replacement, and you can take a sample of any size you want. If you set replace equals false, then you can't sample the same element twice, and so you can't have a sample larger than the original vector. So replace equals false would give you a good way to do a permutation, uh, but if you do a sample size of 10,000 on the vector 1 through 6, and you set sample to false, you get an error. Uh, if you set replace to false, you get an error, because uh, you can only take a sample size of 6, and you can't run 10,000 trials. Prob is a probability vector. It's a vector of relative weights that get assigned to each of the outcomes in X. Uh, one nice thing here, though, is that you don't have to have prob have entries that add up to one. So if you want to do a sample uh, of heads and tails, but you want to have a biased coin where tails has a probability of 60% of occurring, you could have your prob vector be the vector 4, 6, and that would weight heads 40%, tails 60%. So let's take a look at this in action. Uh, I'm going to do Dobro exercise 1.43, uh, which asks you to simulate the probability of getting at least one eight in the sum of two dice rolls. What he really means there is, what's the probability of getting an eight when you roll two dice? So it's not worded perfectly, but that's what he's asking. Uh, and let me just encourage you now, go ahead and pause the video or come back to the video later and try the exercise yourself first, and you can compare your answer with mine. Okay, so here's my solution. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run 10,000 trials. That's a fairly commonly chosen number for experiments like this. If you chose 1,000 or 100,000, that's fine. And what I'll do is I'm going to create a vector of rolls for die number one, and then I'm going to create a vector of rolls for die number two. So here I'm using the sample function for die number one. I'm sampling from the possible outcomes of the rolls, uh, which is one through six. My size is set equal to trials, so I've set that to 10,000. And the reason I've set it to trials rather than 10,000 here is so that I can change it in one place if I want to change the number of trials for the experiment. I'm setting replace equals true. I can roll the same number more than once in my 10,000 trials. And I'm going to leave the probability, func uh, probability parameter set to null. Uh, you don't actually have to specify that. If you want to leave it as null, just leave it out. Uh, but just so that you see it explicitly written there. That way each outcome is equally likely. I'll do the same thing for a second die. So you, here you'll see again I've sampled from 1 to 6. Size equals trials. And that's why I used that trials variable so that I can just change it once if I want to change the entire sample uh, for this experiment. Uh, replace equals true again. Probability equals null again. And then my result is the sum of the two dice. right? So in R we add in, in a vectorized fashion, so I add the results of die 1 and die 2, and now I have a vector of 10,000 results. 
And what I want to know is how many of those equal 8. So what I'll do is I'll take the mean of result equals equals 8. So what does that do? Well, result equals equals 8 is a comparison vector. So I get trues and falses. So for each element of result, I get true if it equals 8, false if it doesn't. And then the mean function just says, you know, how many of those results were true divided by how many there were total. And if you're curious, when I ran the experiment, I ran it and got a mean of 0 0.1387, which is very close to the theoretical result, which is 5 divided by 36, or 0 0.138 repeating forever.